Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank all of you um, who have joined us today for the webinar because we have a long uh, holiday coming up with Friday, Saturday, Sunday and, and the May 1st. Despite of that, you've taken the time out today to attend uh, the webinar with Zoho and Bimalji. So uh, we are very, very thankful for all of you who have taken the time out to attend today. And for today, if you see, we've got uh, the topic interplay of bill to ship to supply with registration and ITC in GST. And uh, we have uh, our very own tax expert, uh, CA Bimal Jain, to host the session. But before I give you a quick intro of Bimal Ji and, uh, and welcome him to the webinar, I'd like to do a little bit of housekeeping of this particular uh, interface that you see. So here, if you see, uh, you have a, a Q&A tab. So that is a tab that you can use to interact with Bimalji. So Bimalji is going to keep the entire webinar entertaining for all of you. So uh, you will be able to interact with him, uh, answer all the questions that he poses in the Q&A section. And please reserve the questions that you have uh, for him to answer towards the end of the webinar. So once um, we finish the webinar, then you can post the uh, questions in the same Q&A tab so that it's easy for me to keep a track and also project it to Bimalji so that he can answer all your queries. So uh, let's use the Q&A tab uh, until the end of the webinar for interactions with Bimalji. And then towards the end of the webinar, let's use it for the questions that you want uh, Bimalji to answer. So I hope I'm clear to all of you. Can you all give me a yes in the chat if I'm clear? All right, amazing. So um, uh, today, uh, today we've got uh, CA Bimalji with us. Join us for the webinar. Uh, welcome for the uh, welcome to the webinar, Bimalji. We are happy to have you here. And he is also taking the time out. There's a long weekend for him as well. So he is taking the time out to interact with all of you. So uh, this is like a uh, um, collaboration that we are doing with Bimalji for uh, almost uh, twelve months now. And uh, uh, we have. This is the, uh, one of the webinars that we have done in the previous series of webinar, and all our webinars have got great support, great interactions, and engagement. And we all can see the love that you have for Bimalji and for Zoho. Thank you all for uh, uh, giving us such good support uh, throughout our collaboration with Bimalji. And uh, uh, I hope uh, Bimalji doesn't need any introduction to the audience that we have today, but I'd still like to give a brief intro of Bimalji for those of you who'd like to know him a little more. So he's a member of Institute of Chartered Accountants of India since May 1994 and member of Institute of Company Secretaries of India since December 2006, along with a bachelor's degree in law. He is a qualified uh, SAP and financial control consultant and has more than 21 years of experience in indirect taxation and specializes in all aspects of GST, service tax, VAT, CST, central excise, uh, uh, customs, uh, FTP, SEZ, EOU, export import laws. He has working experience of more than 18 years in renowned companies like LG Electronics, Honda Motorcycle, Hindustan Development Corporation, Kaitan and Company. And presently, he is the executive director of A to Z Tax Corp LLP, a boutique indirect tax firm. In addition to this, he has uh, uh, gained more awards and recognitions. To name a few, uh, he has been uh, a part of a uh, uh, keynote speaker at the Guinness World Record made by ICSI la uh, largest taxation lesson on GST attended by 4,500 plus participants breaking earlier record of Japan. He's won the business leader award from Amity School Noida, best speaker award from NIRC ICA slash ICWAI, Young Achievers Award at Igniting Minds 2015, best participant award in MSOP 117th batch by ICSI. Welcome to the webinar, Bimalji. Uh, the platform is all yours. At the outset, let me thank all the participants who are joining today on very important topic. GST almost six years, but still this topic is so hot. And still, I have seen number of queries I get on this particular topic. So that is the reason we have chosen this topic as a handholding, learning, and resolving your queries pertaining to build to ship to with interplay 
on ITC and registration provision. And I'm sure you'd be loving this uh, today's topic because GST, when you're doing practically, you get a lot of insight, clarity, which really create your interest in the subject matter. So I always try my best that uh, you should really learn the topic with a practical example. So I'm sure you all are ready. Again, requested to each one of you take a piece of paper and pen or pencil so that you know we can start and uh, this is two way communication from my side and from your side. And we both would be interacting together. I would be asking those queries during my deliberation and you would be responding and I'm sure you'd be responding the right answer. Even though you do not know the answer, do not worry about it. Rest assured today, in case you are not having answer, at least you must give a try. And I'm here to resolve those queries. This topic is uh, too technical, but I will make it live and lucid and practical for understanding of each of the participants who have joined now. So without taking much time, let me start with the first, the first important point. In GST, we have to determine the supply made by you is it intrastate or interstate. If it is intrastate, we all know CGST and SGST leviable. In case of interstate, IGST leviable. But what is the thumb rule? As I said, you would be having piece of paper, pen or pencil. I would be sharing my mobile number. Either you can, uh, you know, whatever you prepare, you can put on social media also. This is what you learn today. Point wise number by each. and this preparation whatever you're recording and noting down on a piece of paper i'm sure it will really help you for you to recall what you learned today so try to make note of it that practical example whatever i'm going to discuss today the first if location of supplier say delhi and place of supply is delhi then transaction is intrastate, CGST and Delhi SGST leviable. If location of supplier Delhi and place of supply is any other state other than Delhi, then transaction is interstate supply, IGST leviable. This thumb rule is known to all of us together. Let me ask the very first question. Let's say I'm supplying from Delhi to Haryana. Delhi to Haryana. So my goods are moving from Delhi to Haryana. In which state I'm supposed to take registration? Delhi or Haryana? Please tell me. It's an origin state or destination state? Delhi or Haryana? Please write answer, whatever. Even though I'm asking some basic question, Please write the answer so that I get clarity. Of course, Delhi, you all are right. So for registration, you have to take registration in the state where from you're supplying goods or services, which is called origin state. But goods are destined to Haryana. Ultimately, it is going to Haryana. So GST is a destination-based consumption tax. So the SGST component, which normally accrue to the state, in our example, when goods moving from Delhi to Haryana, it will accrue to Delhi or Haryana because ultimately goods are destined to Haryana. Please tell me, which state will get SGST component? Of course, uh, it is Haryana, right? So conceptually, what we have learned for registration, you will take registration in the state where from supply of goods or services are being made. That is called origin state. But Delhi will not get any GST component. 
even though goods are moving manufacture let's assume from delhi but delhi will not get anything it is destination state consuming state haryana they will get the sgst component hope i am clear to all of you in terms of registration and destination i'm clear if i'm clear say yes in a chat box that this part is very very clear to all of you so that no doubt exists okay perfect now let's start with some uh, interesting practical example let's say i'm uh, registered and this example you must note down in that note sheet which you are preparing i'm a supplier registered in delhi and you all are from tamil nadu so my buyer those who are watching this webinar today they are buyer and they are registered in the state of tamil nadu it's a b2b supply registered supplier to register the cpn so bimal jain being supplier who is a manufacturer of goods registered in delhi you as my buyer recipient registered in the state of tamil nadu there are two kind of transaction which we have seen in the commercial parlance one is called for destination and another one is called xwork sell xwork so we are going to discuss both the transaction in a very crystal clear terms it is b2b register supplier to register recipient before i start my example let me ask the question so that i could understand that whether you are really up to the mark or not if it is a for destination and what is a for destination by the way you have given a contract to the supplier and you have told to the supplier to supply particular goods to your premises in tamil nadu so ultimately supplier going to pick up transport and deliver the goods to your premises in tamil nadu and you are tamil nadu registered please tell me transaction would be intra or inter give me the answer in a chat box is a intra state supply or inter state supply so perfect each one of you have given the right answer and i was sure that i'm going to get a right answer from you somebody has said intra i do not know it is some uh, uh, i don't know who who is manohar he is saying intra i don't know how come he is saying intra again manohar is copy pasting once again intra so i don't know manohar is it intentionally you are doing or something uh, wrong on your part simple manohar with you and with others try to understand location of supplier delhi bimal jain place of supply where delivery terminates so 101a section 10 subsection 1 clause a of igst act clearly says and you all listen because second question is important those 99% who have given me the right answer they are going to have challenge in responding the next question so listen the provision first 101a the supply involves movement of goods movement of goods either by supplier of course because supplier is undertaking this movement from delhi to tamil nadu or by recipient or by any other person then place of supply would be where delivery terminates the so delivery is terminating in tamil nadu so that is called place of supply so as a logic which i told you manohar because you are the only one who copy pasted and given the wrong answer location of supplier bimal jain delhi and place of supply where delivery terminates which is tamil nadu transaction would be interstate supply so igst liable so no confusion now 
now challenge once again to all of you had it been xworks transaction what is xworks you as a buyer of tamil nadu registration coming to my factory at delhi i'm handing over the goods to you at my factory gate at delhi i'm handing over the goods to you at my factory gate at delhi now the question to all of you and please location of supplier no doubt delhi place of supply becomes important here i have handed over the goods to you to my buyer at my factory gate at delhi so place of supply would be delhi or tamil nadu if it is delhi then cgst and sgst right and if place of supply is tamil nadu then it is interstate igst so get set ready in case of xwax transaction i handed over the goods to you at my factory gate at delhi transaction would be intrastate or interstate please reply in the question answers box intra or inter let me see what answer i'm getting so question answers uh, you know tab you have to use it so a lot of you are now making mistake which i was uh, assuming that uh, uh, some of you will definitely do the mistake okay not an issue so a lot of you are making mistakes some of you are very very right and some of you are totally wrong some of you are saying it's a intrastate cgst and delhi sgst liable answer is let's listen the answer first and then i will justify why my answer is like this this transaction will continue to be interstate igst liable igst liable why listen the answer first section 101a what i said i'm repeating again the supply involves movement of goods supply is involving movement of goods either by supplier so supplier is not undertaking that from delhi to tamil nadu or by the cpn of course you are taking the goods at my factory gate at delhi but you will deploy your transporter and truck get the goods loaded and take from delhi to tamil nadu quite obvious right then these goods are moving to your premises in tamil nadu because this was x works transaction or by any other receipt any other person then pos would be place of supply would be where delivery terminates so delivery is going to terminate in tamil nadu only transaction is interstate logic number 1 logic number 2 we all know now ebay bill is compulsory right and compulsory compulsory means either supplier or recipient or transporter need to generate the ebay bill the standard threshold amount is 50000 rupees so we are assuming that this is a more than 10 lakh rupees transaction is of taxable supply is of 10 lakh rupees ebay bill need to be generated in case of for destination the supply undertakes causes movement of goods then quite obvious supplier going to generate the ebay bill but in case of xwax recipient buyer who causes the movement of goods and you will generate the ebay bill so while generating ebay bill you will say place of dispatch is delhi and place of destination is tamil nadu quite obvious interstate it can't be intrastate logic number 2 logic number 
if I wrongly assume, which some of you have answered as an intrastate, if I wrongly assume, and charge CGST and Delhi SGST, whether this uh, credit going to be auto populated in your 2A or 2B of Tamil Nadu registration, please tell me, is it going to be auto populated because place of supply is not Tamil Nadu? Wrongly, I have charged CGST and Delhi SGST. So I am going to show Delhi. Is it going to be auto populated? Please tell me. Yes, but it is not eligible. It is going to be auto populated, correctly said by some Salim, but uh, it is ineligible. You can't take credit, but no credit. So, given three logic to all of you, can you say it is intrastate? It can't be intrastate. If India is a one nation, one tax, one market, then quite obvious these logic need to be understood. Hence, transaction is again interstate supply, IGST liable. Please tell me in a chat box. Tell me in a chat box, first of all. I'm going to respond back to other guys, those who are having some connected question. Don't worry, do not go away. In question answers, I'm going to touch base. I'm not chipping in in between because momentum will go away, but I have clarified to the best. Tell me, is it clear to all of you that this transaction is an interstate? Say yes in a chat box. Say yes in a chat box. I will come to counter say everything. I will come back later. You first say that you got it so that I'm comfortable that you understood it. OK, perfect, perfect. Very well done. OK, now allow me to make another example to all of you. OK. Am I audible to all otherwise? Because there's a little power cut here. So I don't know. Am I audible to all? OK, OK, all right, all right, all right. Now, this was pertaining to B2B supply. Had it been a B2C counter cell, what to be done? In counter cell, what happened? I'm registered. Let's say I got a sari shop at Delhi. And you all are unregistered recipient buyer of Tamil Nadu. You are coming all the way from Tamil Nadu to Delhi to purchase sari. So you purchase five designer sari, five designer sari because some marriage occasion at your family, in your family. You purchase five designer sari worth 10 lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees. So it's a B2C transaction where Pan India is confused and they are looking for the answer. So when you're purchasing this five sarees worth 10 lakh rupees, which is counter sell B2C, registered supplier to unregistered recipient. Now, please tell me, this transaction would be intrastate or interstate? Tell me the answer in a chat box. Intrastate or interstate? So I'm looking for the answer. Please tell me in case of B2C. Okay. Okay. All right. Intrastate. Okay. A lot of you are saying intrastate. Okay. All right. Since it is B2C. Okay. So Suryam is giving little different answer. All right. And my answer to all of you, my answer to all of you, this transaction is interstate supply. You'll be thinking what I'm saying, am I right? You must be amazed and surprised, right? This is interstate. IGST should have been charged. 
but pan india is doing the mistake pan india is doing the mistake pan india i'm telling you and let me tell you where from this provisions are coming in see in case of b2c if you say intra state then i would have charged cgst and delhi sgst which i have charged and this delhi sgst has gone to the kitty of delhi government arvind kejriwal but gst is a destination based consumption tax right i told you it must accrue to the state where ultimately it is going to be consumed so which state going to be consumed because you are coming all the way from tamil nadu am i right ultimately it is consumed for the tamil nadu state so sgst component must accrue to the tamil nadu state am i right tamil nadu state but you all gave me the answer interest state and uh, where from it is coming it is interest state listen the answer rule 46e of cgst rules you can note down rule 46 sub rule e of cgst rules it clearly saying in case of b2c transaction your taxable value is more than 50000 more than 50000 so in my case it was 10 lakh rupees they are saying bimal as a supplier bimal as a supplier when he is raising the invoice he will capture the name and address of the recipient including address for the delivery including the state name and state code this is the compulsion on supplier to capture wherever taxable value is more than 50000 rupees rule 46 e please second case just try to understand logic you are unregistered right but uh, supplier is registered right and value is more than 50000 for generation of e bay bill right so who will generate e bay bill of course your supplier and he will say delhi to tamil nadu right delhi to tamil nadu then how come uh, this supplier will generate invoice with intra state and e bay bill would be interstate and there the compliance rule 46e and it is going to be interstate supply wherever taxable value is more than 50000 am i clear or not you may not have followed i'm sure about it but please tell me please tell me it is clear now to all of you that this transaction would be interstate supply please tell me first you say for less than 50000 you say intra or inter no problem but more than 50000 interstate you need to capture name and address uh some vinod kumar agarwal saying however difficult to keep track on such b2c vinod ji no choice no choice i can't help it this is the provision which i'm telling you first you tell me whether provision is clear or not practicable how to do it these are subsequent question but provision wise you must say yes sir provision wise i'm clear provision wise no doubt to me of course for b2c ebay bill required your registered supplier will generate the ebay bill subham so all right i i i say to everyone now 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 let me touch another point if you are my tax consultant and i have followed the way you suggested and you suggested wrongly to me cgst and delhi sgst last 5 6 years i am following the cgst and delhi sgst which is not correct for p to c count as sell so what happen if audit comes up any inspection comes up 
department going to tell you, Mr. Jain, it's an interstate. You should have charged IGST. And you will reply quite obvious that you charge CGST and SGST. You collected and deposited also. Am I right? That is what your answer would be. So this officer will say, I'm list bothered. Tamil Nadu chief minister will come and say, no, no, this was my SGST pie because destination based consumption tax. So department will ask you to deposit IGST. Then what happened? The CGST and SGST, which you have collected and deposited. Of course, you have to go for a refund, right? Some of the queries pertaining to these, this particular topic. Now, when they will ask you to deposit IGST, transaction may be of 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. You are depositing IGST now. Whether interest is alleviable, please tell me yes and no in a chat box. Yes and no in a chat box. Please tell me in a chat box, interest is alleviable on payment of IGST. Okay, lot of yes and lot of no. So how interesting it is, see? So all of us are not trying to answer. Some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying no. Section 77 of CGST Act. Read with section 19 of IGST Act. Are you noting down on a piece of paper? No interest. No interest leviable. You have to only deposit the IGST. Second question. You have already paid CGST and SGST 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, for which you are depositing IGST in 23 and 24, the current period, current financial year. So once you pay IGST, of course, with no interest, you have to go for refund of CGST and SGST. And Section 54 put a condition of two years time limit, right? For claiming the refund. So for 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, two years passed away. Are you entitled? Can you claim the refund of this wrongly paid taxes when I'm talking about provision? Section 77 of CGST Act, read with Section 19 of IGST Act. Can you claim refund? Say yes and no. Yes and no. Okay. Lot of you, yes. Okay. Okay. So this time, a uh, lot of you are saying yes. Answer is yes. And uh, this two years will start, this time limit will start from the date you make the payment of IGST. So this two years limitation will start only from the date when you make the payment of IGST. Please tell me, is it clear now? Say yes, that this topic is very, very clear now. No time bar, don't say. Okay, is it clear? All right, thank you. So very well done. So, so quickly you understood everything. Okay, now build to SIP2. Bill 2, set 2, and you have to pay attention. A lot of practical we are going to do. What is Bill 2, SIP 2, as per 10, 1, B of IGST Act? In Bill 2, SIP 2, they are saying uh, we are supply of goods made by the supplier to the recipient or any other person on direction of third person on direction of third person whether he is agent or otherwise before or during movement before or during the movement of goods by way of transfer of title to the goods by way of transfer of document towards title of the goods. And they are saying in that case, 
it shall be deemed as received goods by that third person at whose instruction or direction goods are being moved and place of supply would be the principal place of business of at that third person so this is the 10 1 b of igst act now to make it practical eg and lucid example number one are you noting down again i'm recalling because once you note it down you will capture it properly let's say there are three party a b and c a is a supplier in delhi so write down a is a supplier in delhi you can just help me out eh? so that uh, you understand and of course i'm asking you to write it down it will help you definitely help you it will clarify all the doubt in your mind a is a supplier in delhi b is in up and b is asking a of delhi to supply the goods to c of haryana please tell me in the chat box whether my this fact is clear b of up asking a of delhi who is a supplier to deliver the goods to customer c at haryana whether this is clear please tell me in a chat box whether clear this factual part is clear okay okay all right so factual part is clear now for 10 1 b bill to sip 2 bill to sip 2 so supplier going to bill to b up sip 2 to c haryana that is the region called bill to sip 2 now please tell me in this transaction there is one supply or two supply please tell me one supply or two supply one supply or two supply There is two supply. A to B, because A is supplying at the direction of B only. A does not know who is C. And B is ultimately supplying to C. So there are two supply, A to B and B to C. So this part is again clear. Now, I'm just recalling 10 1 B. In case of 10 1 B, they are saying place of supply would be the principal place of business of the third person at whose direction goods are supplied by supplier to recipient or any other person. So in case of A to B, A to B age location is delhi location of supplier delhi and place of supply would be principal place of business of b which is up transaction age interstate supply am i right please tell me at least say yes in the chat box that this part is clear a to b is interstate supply now when b is raising invoice to C. So B's location is UP, location of supplier UP. What would be POS place of supply? Then 10 1A will come into the picture. So place of supply where delivery terminates, which is Haryana. So transaction would again be interstate supply. Please tell me, am I clear? So both the transaction would be interstate supply. Please tell me, am I clear? Say yes in the chat box that this part is very, very clear, no doubt. Okay, clear. Now let me complicate it. Let me complicate it. Let me create a little, you know, some, some uh, googly. Now, A is a supplier, second example. So write down. A is a supplier in Delhi. A is a supplier in Delhi. B is the third person at UP. Same. 
third person at UP. But B want A of Delhi to deliver the goods to customer C at Delhi only. I'm repeating again so that no doubt. And I'm sure I will get correct answer from each one of you. B is a third person giving instruction direction to A of Delhi, which is a supplier, to deliver the goods to customer C at Delhi only. At Delhi only. All right. Hope uh, this factual is clear to all of you. Now you have to resolve. There's two supply, A to B and B to C. So tell me, A to B is a intra or inter with the same logic, with the same example. Tell me, intra or inter. Please tell me. So I'm looking for the answer. Intra or inter. Of course, interstate supply, right? No doubt about it, right? No doubt. Interstate. And B to C again? B to C again? B to C again? Oh. Uh, there's one guy made the mistake, Asok J, and Balbinder Singh made the mistake. B to C again going to be interstate. Location of supplier of B, UP, and place of supply where delivery terminates, Delhi, interstate. So both the transaction is interstate. A to B is also inter, and B to C is also inter. Please tell me, yes. Those who made the mistake, please, I'm putting a lot of efforts. Don't fail me. Interstate supply. Am I clear? Am I clear? Say yes in a chat box. Yes in a chat box. Say yes in a chat box. That interstate. All right. So some of you say it wrong. Okay, not an issue. So clear. Perfect. Perfect. I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. All right. All right. Again, third, let's say those who made the mistake, let them correct again. Let them correct again. Now, B is of Delhi. The person, third person is from Delhi. Asking A of Delhi, which is supplier, to deliver the goods to customer C at Haryana. I'm again repeating. And do not make mistake. I'm putting a lot of efforts. Do not fail me for, uh, you know, listen very carefully and get it pass. B is now in Delhi. B is a third person. At whose instruction, at whose instruction, direction, A is of Delhi, who is a supplier, delivering the goods to customer C, at UP, at UP, so clear. So again, two supply A to B and B to C, clear. So A to B transaction would be intra or inter. Please give me the answer, intra or inter. Okay, so A to B is intra, perfect. So my audience is, who is saying inter? Mehul, Panchal, what Mehul again? I said 10 1 B Mehul, location of supplier Delhi, place of supply, principal place of business of that third person, which is again Delhi, transaction be intrastate. Am I right? A to B, intrastate CGST and SGST. And what about B to C? Location of supplier B, Delhi, and place of supply where delivery terminates, UP, transaction would be interstate. Sankar, Sankar, you're failing me. I'm very clear. I hope I'm very, very clear. Am I clear to all say yes in the chat box? Some of you are still, I do not know why they are not being able to understand. Please tell me in the chat box, am I clear to all? Say yes in the chat box at least, that I'm clear. 
Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, yes, yes, perfect. Very, very clear. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Now, now listen, some of the query rel related to this and which you must know. GST is a destination based consumption tax, right? Let's take the last example for discussion. Last example. B of Delhi, who is a third person, wanted A, who is a supplier of Delhi, to deliver the goods to customer C at UP. This was a transaction. In this example, A is billing to B, Delhi, shipping to customer C at UP. So goods are ultimately consumed in UP. So SGST must accrue to the state of UP, Yogi Ji. But how beautifully this transaction is being done. Listen very carefully. When A to B bill is being made, it was intrastate, CGST and Delhi SGST. A raising invoice to B. B will take the credit, CGST and Delhi SGST, because he's registered in Delhi. When B is raising invoice to C, then he will charge IGST. His output tax would be IGST. So IGST, but for discharging IGST, he will use the credit of CGST and SGST. So once IGST charge for the state place of supply UP, then SGST, which was supposed to accrue to the state of UP, has gone to the state of UP. B was only intermediary, taking the credit, using the credit for discharging ultimate output tax to the state of UP. So with this example, this SGST component has gone to the state of UP. That is called GST is a destination-based consumption tax. Hope I'm clear. Please tell me, am I clear to all of you? Say yes and no. First of all, yes or no. Please tell me. Please tell me, am I clear to all or not? Say yes or no in a in a chat box. I want to see yes and no in a chat box. Okay. Yes. Second, second, second. Listen very carefully. Those maximums are yes. So I've said yes, uh, the part of, you know, clarity. Okay. Okay. Now, second question. There are two supply, A to B and B to C. And less example is B is uh, placing an order for 100 rupees to A. And B ultimately raising invoice to C at 120 rupees, 120 rupees, 120 rupees. And let's carry on with the third example. B is in Delhi. Third person, listen very carefully because this is critical part. B is third person in Delhi, asking A of Delhi supplier to deliver the goods to customer C at UP, right? So two supply we all understood. So B has placed the order for 100 rupees to A. So quite obvious, A is going to raise the invoice for 100 rupees to B. B in turn going to raise the invoice to C at 120 rupees. So there is 20% markup profit. C does not know at what price B is purchasing, which is 100 rupees. Keep it to your mind. These, these numbers are very interesting one. Keep to your mind. Now, if C catch hold the invoice of A to B, then C will come to know that B is making profit of 20 rupees, right? C will come to know which B would not be preferring, which B would not be liking. First point. 
So quite obvious, B would be expecting that his invoice, B's invoice will go to C at 120 rupees. So C should not come to know at what price B is purchasing from A. Now in this case, to supply, whether one eBay bill is required or two eBay bill is required. Please tell me whether one eBay bill or two eBay bill. Tell me how many eBay bill is required. One or two. Please tell me quickly. I want quick answer. Okay. Quickly, one eBay bill or two eBay bill. Just one eBay bill is required. Just one eBay bill. Only one eBay bill is required. Now the question will come, who will generate the eBay bill? A, B, or C, because all three can, right? All three are permissible, or they're transporter also. So you tell me who would be preferring, to whom you would be preferring to generate the eBay bill? A, B, or C? Please tell me. That is the answer I'm looking for. And once I get the answer, then I think who would be preferred? A, B, or C? So who should generate the eBay bill? I'm just looking at the you know question answers tab because I don't know chat box is not available today. But I really want you tell me who would be generating the eBay bill. OK, so I will do. I will do. Listen very carefully now. Listen very carefully now. Okay. I said only one eBay bill. Two eBay bill is not required. If you ask A to generate the eBay bill, then what A will do? A will raise the invoice bill to B, Delhi, SIP to C, Haryana, place of dispatch. Uh, uh, C is UP, sorry. C is UP. So A will raise the invoice A to B daily, bill to daily, and SIP to C UP. And he will put his underlying invoice, age invoice of 100 rupees. And if a generate eBay bill and underlying invoice of A goes to C, then C will come to know that ultimately goods purchased by B was of 100 rupees, which B would not be interested. So in this case, it is highly advisable that B should generate the eBay bill. And with his underlying invoice of 120 rupees. So what B would be doing? B would be raising bill to C, SIP to C, UP, putting 120 rupees value, place of dispatch, Delhi, place of destination, UP. And that is how goods are being delivered to ultimate customer at UP, showing the value 120. And customer will not come to know that the B has purchased at 100 rupees. Tell me, am I clear to all? Please tell me, am I clear to all? First of all, please tell me, am I clear to all or not? Or shall I repeat again, last part? Am I clear to all? Okay, let me let me let me repeat again for the sake of you know few of the participants who could not get it properly. I'm repeating again. I'm repeating again and listen very carefully. Do not uh, you know get any mistake. Listen, listen. I said we require to have uh, one eBay bill, even though there is two supply. First. And this window is available on eBay bill portal. Who will generate the eBay bill? A, B, or C? I said anyone, even transporter. If A is going to generate the eBay bill, then problem is A will put his underlying invoice for generation of eBay bill, then he will mention the value 100 rupees which C will come to know 
and which B would not be preferring. So in that case, I suggested let's B generate the eBay bill. How B would be generating? B would be saying bill to C, SIP to C. Place of dispatch daily, which is place of dispatch where from A is going to supply and place of destination would be siege customer place up and then b would be putting the value of each underlying invoice of 120 rupees in that ebay bill c will get that underlying invoice 120 ebay bill 120 dispatched from daily to his premises c will not come to know who is a so C will not come to know where from exactly B has procured. Place of dispatch is important, no denial. But C will not come to know that at what price B has purchased the same. And thereby, this margin is being uh, protected by B. That is how this transaction would be done. That's what I said and repeated again. Am I clear now to all of you? Please tell me in the chat box. Am I clear? Please tell me, am I clear to all of you? First, you say, am I clear? Am I clear? Say yes in a chat box at least. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Right. If some question is left out, don't worry. We have question answer session also. I will touch base those queries, but most of the participants are going in sync and they are finding dispatch from an eBay bill of age location. And place of destination, siege location. Okay. All right. Now, now listen. Now listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Now this part is over. I've got some question which I want to post. Whether bill to SIP to model can be applied once you have received the delivery and then you are billing to the customer. Let's say A, B, C again, but B has actually received the goods. So A has raised the invoice to B and B has collected and received the goods. Can it be built to SIP2 model? Say yes and no. Can it be built to SIP2 model? Say yes and no. It cannot be. It cannot be. It should be before or during the movement of goods. So at most, at most, you can uh, execute the transaction when goods are before or during the movement, first part. Second part, a has, let's assume, A has raised the invoice today, 27th April, 2023. A has raised the invoice. Bill to ship to model, we are discussing. A has raised the invoice to B on 27th April. Goods are ultimately delivered to C at UP on 2nd May. 2nd May. 2nd May. Now, my two questions. My, my two questions. In this bill to ship to model, B is actually not receiving goods. But we have to satisfy the condition of section 16, subsection 2, clause B, that one of the condition is that buyer recipient must receive the goods. Am I right? But in bill to ship to model, B is not actually receiving goods. So the explanation, Roman 1, under section 16 to b clearly saying in case of bill to ship to transaction it is considered as a deemed received even uh, 10 1 b is also saying deemed received in the hands of third person so they are saying as if b has received the goods so this part is clear even though not actually received it will not create any bottleneck but only problem two problem first a has raised the invoice on 27th April. C has collected the goods on 2nd May. So what would be the date in the hands of B 
which is called as a date of receipt of goods 27th april or 2nd may please tell me give me the answer in a chat box give me the answer in a chat box which would be which would be my dear friends my dear friends please to my mind it would be 2nd may it would be 2nd may that is called received that is the ultimately when customer receive it is deemed received in the hands of b that is called 2nd may please correct am i clear i know that some of you say 27th april but i'm not agreeing it is 2nd may which would be considered as a receipt so supplier supplier so supplier is raising invoice on 27th april he will in, so in a gstr1 on 27th april it will get auto populated in two way to be of the recipient for the april month but unless it is being received so received by c is a deemed received by b that is what the provision interpretation so even that it's coming in to a to b of april credit is not available credit is available only when it is received which is may month am i clear to all please tell me i given my interpretation to all of you please first say in a chat box that this is clear to all of you receive date okay receive date now next question only in may month next question age raising invoice on 27th april right what would be the date of raising invoice by b please tell me what would be date of invoice for b to raise to c please tell me 27th april 28th april 29th april or maybe 3rd may please tell me what is your, what is your take what is answer coming to your mind okay so a lot of you are giving different different answer right so interesting right we have we haven't thought on those line that is what it is coming out so section 31 going to be important section 31 is saying invoice to be raised before or at the time of delivery since this is a bill to ship to model so it is by transfer of title in goods through a document quite obvious that uh, invoice to be raised before at the time of supply before at the time of supply so when age is initiating supply if b has to generate the ebay bill on 27th april which we have discussed quite obvious that b will also raise the invoice to c on 27th april am i clear say yes and no chat, chat box 27th april why i have given the logic to all of you please tell me say yes and no in a chat box i won't really honor before but i given you the logic also so all right clear okay so my audience is very very perfect today thank you thank you oh so very very well done last case study and which is pertaining to services one of the guy in chat box one of the participants in chat box was looking that for pertaining to services i must explain so i will discuss this uh, service part as well and i will discuss on the basis of See, it is uh, a negative stock. Stock is coming in the books of accounts, uh, Mohan Kumar, only when you receive. Getting invoice does not mean stock will go up, Mohan ji. Okay, listen now. Last example, last example. And this is uh, the, the real gem piece, the, the real example which you can't imagine. I'm telling you, some of you may be knowing, I don't know whether you know or not, but I can tell you in a bit that this is the real open questions. Listen carefully pertaining to services. 
and uh, you have to listen very very carefully there was a contractor works contractor tnd electrical so i'm saying tnd registered in the state of rajasthan rajasthan and i'm picking up this example with the uh, subtle advanced ruling so you should not doubt it also so works contractor tnd electricals registered in rajasthan got a contract from sri cement registered in rajasthan so client is sri cement so sri cement wanted to construct a township in the state of karnataka in the state of karnataka so township need to be constructed in the state of karnataka so again i am explaining the factual position t and d is a works contractor registered in rajasthan sri cement registered in rajasthan but for township which is to be constructed in the state of karnataka so this is the example i give it to all of you now we have to discuss lot many things here whether tnd electrical need to take registration in the state of karnataka for undertaking construction of this township this is the first question first question and there are other question like let's say this tnd electrical procuring cement in iron steel from rajasthan supplier will to tnd electrical in rajasthan but ship to karnataka possible or not possible or even karnataka supplier supplying cement and iron steel will to tnd electrical rajasthan ship to karnataka location where township need to be constructed so these are the so many questions coming around now i need answer from you and i will go a little slow because this is very very critical very very critical uh, you know example listen very carefully in this example my first question tnd electrical which is registered in rajasthan want to undertake works contract services which is supply of service contract need to take registration in karnataka and we can always uh, you know say that this is one of the example what happen if this tnd electrical is having box contract in 229 different state are they supposed to take 29 separate registration or they can continue to have one registration of principal place of business of rajasthan and execute these works contract in different state please tell me one registration is okay or they need to take separate registration okay 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 so lot of you are giving different different answers some of you are giving very correct answers as per me and as per this advance ruling they say tnd electrical need not require to take registration in karnataka need not required they can continue to execute this works contract with registration of rajasthan that is the principal place of business unless just keep in your mind the exception they should not have fix establishment in karnataka and fix establishment is characterized by sufficient degree of permanence of human and technical resources so one is called the main office rajasthan of tnd electrical with this main office all the works 
box contract services are being supervised, managed, and executed. For the namesake, they have got project office just to look after, but under guidance, supervision, and observation by Rajasthan Office of TND Electrical. So that project office will not be fixed establishment. So fixed establishment is only with sufficient degree of permanence of human or technical resources. Or establishment most directly concerned. So TND is not having any such office in Karnataka. Or usual place of residence not having. So they can continue to have principal place of business of Rajasthan and from there they can execute, monitor, supervise, get this works contract done through a project office and project office is at this at whole wholly reporting with the direction of office of Rajasthan of TND Electrical. So no need of separate registration in Karnataka. Am I clear? Please tell me this part is clear. Say yes in a chat box that this part is clear. Say in a chat box this part is clear. Okay, so one registration. Okay, now next question. If some cement and iron steel supplier of Rajasthan supplying cement and iron steel at direction of TND Electrical to the site at Karnataka. Will it be built to SIP to model? Can it satisfy the condition of build to SIP to model? Say yes and no in a chat box. Can it satisfy build to SIP to model? Yes. Yes, it can satisfy build to SIP to model. In that case, supplier of cement and steel billing to TND Rajasthan. So Rajasthan supplier to TND Rajasthan intrastate CGST SGST even the goods are being delivered to a site at Karnataka when TND electrical subsequently raising the invoice for works contract services works contract services please tell me whether their transaction would be intrastate or interstate Keep in your mind that GST is a destination based consumption tax. Location of supplier TND Electrical, Rajasthan. Place of supply, location of immovable property, even though sea cement registered in Rajasthan. But location of immovable property, the place of supply and transaction would be interstate, IGST liable. IGST, am I clear? Am I clear? Interstate, interstate, perfect, perfect. So look at GST, the destination based consumption tax, right? Ultimately, Karnataka must get the SGST component, right? Supplier of cement, iron, steel, charge, CGST, and SGST to TND Electrical, of which TND Electrical has taken the credit. But what it will be done? He is going to use this credit for discharging IGST liability and ultimately IGST has gone to Karnataka. So SGST will accrue to the state of Karnataka on the concept of GST, the destination based consumption tax. Hope I'm clear. Let's change the example. If Karnataka supplier of cement and iron steel, a direction of TND electrical lifestyle, Supplying cement and iron steel at the project site at Karnataka. So again, two supply, right? So Karnataka supplier supplying cement and steel at the direction of TND Electrical of Rajasthan. Transaction is intrastate or interstate. Please tell me, intra or inter? It will always be interstate, right? And subsequently, when TND Electrical raising invoice. As a supply of service contract will always be interstate supply. And that is how the SGST component of IGST will accrue to the state of Karnataka. Am I clear to all? Please tell me. Am I clear to all? 
okay okay lot of you are very very clear very very clear okay perfect all right all right no 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 so i i was thinking that here i would be having challenge but uh, believe me it was not that uh, you know troublesome for me to make you understand you all got it right it was so clear to all of you now let me let me let me clarify no need of separate registration even though you are undertaking works contract in 29 different state no need no need of registration with the principal place of business at rajasthan you can execute works contract pan india but you should not have any fixed establishment or establishment most directly concerned this is what you need to satisfy even for supply of service you require goods that can again be done with the mode of bill to ship to model and no problem no challenge it's a deem received and that is what the context is being given for even works contract services so this is tnd electrical advance ruling by karnataka advance ruling still holding good and i am of the opinion this ruling is 100% correct and that is my answer to all of you and let me last sum up there was one guy in a chat box he was looking for the services he wanted me again and again sir please tell me uh that uh, for services what it, what will come out i was not able to clearly get through what is his observation but since i have covered my topic of the day today whatever i wanted to discuss i have explained that clearly i have tried my best before i go to the question answers you know session let me ask each one of you let me ask whatever we discussed today is it really you got it clearly have you captured all the provision have you captured the practical example was it really comfortable for you to understand please say yes in a chat box at least i would be happy that uh, this much of you know uh, okay so it, it goes both way i do not know today i am finding lot of emojis are there lot of emojis like hands like uh, uh, clapping lot of things are coming it might be uh, harshini is using the new platform for this uh, webinar today so that's the reason lot of things are coming back to me all right very good second point second point i have tried to explain i have tried to explain the b2b x works and afor and for b2c counter sale pan india dispute pan india dispute which also i clarified hope that part is also clear to all of you please tell me hope that part is also clear clearly understood b2c counter sale more than 50000 taxable value in terms of rule 46 sub rule e am i clear and then i also discuss wrongly paid taxes what would be implication igst with no interest refund within 2 years from the date when you pay am i am i clear to all of you all right so so there is one guy saying oh he has picked up a uh, big uh, you know comment all right i have tried my best nevertheless let me tell you now with this our this is announcement for all of you a latest gst law and commentary book four volume it's coming in the market within 3 uh, to 5 days within 3 to 5 days coming in the market and pre order is available so that you can get the immediately copy when agent when published it will be dispatched to you so that is gst law and commentary four volume book a detailed analysis and whatever discussion and example which i did today is a part of that book only and we have beautifully in a pictorial way we have explained the transaction and i'm sure you would be loving this book with the content with the pictorial example with lot of jurisprudence and the provisions are discussed accordingly so this is the one announcement now the last and foremost requesting harshini to come forward 
and start the question answer session. Ashwini, back to you. Sure, Bimalji. Thank you so much. We have a lots of um, thumbs up and claps emojis for uh, today's webinar, and we are so happy that people could join us despite of the long weekend. So until May first, uh, it's a long weekend. Many of uh, people would have planned for a trip or something like that. But here, people here, whoever joined us, the three hundred plus people whoever joined us, are here to learn more and also to develop their skills. So we are very very thankful to all of you who have joined us today. And uh, Bhima ji, uh, if you may allow, I will pick up a few questions from here, and then I will uh, ask them to you from the audience. Um, so yeah, um, okay. So I have a question. I have a question. I'm going to read that out, Bhima ji. Um, I don't have an option to project it, so I'll just read that out for you. Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Rahul. He says, if a person is a seller of battery and he's uh, also taking old battery from buyer. Then what will be its treatment in GST? Will it be adjusted in invoice or through credit note? See, ultimately, when uh, you are taking the old battery, let's say four thousand rupees, and giving the new battery for forty thousand rupees, let's assume, then uh, transaction value would be forty-four thousand rupees. So GST going to be levied on forty four thousand for the valuation purpose, for the chargeability of GST in cash, which is forty thousand in kind, four thousand. That is what the valuation provision says. So for chargeability of GST, that is how you have to raise the tax invoice. Am I? Uh, so I don't know who is the who is the person who has asked this query, but this would be the answer for each query. Uh, thank you, Bimalji. Rahul, I hope you understood the uh, question. If you have any queries, you can put it in the chat. Uh, next question is from uh, Jitender. He asks, sir, finally clarify whether B to C with less than 50k taxable value can be with any of IGST or CGST or SGST. Less than 50,000, no problem. Less than 50,000, no problem. It can be intra or inter, no problem. If it is more than 50,000, then compulsorily, as per the example I gave, it would be interstate IGST leviable. Um, I hope that's clear, Jitendra. Next question is from Tarun. Tarun asks, what if there are more than three parties in bill to ship to case? Possible. There may be as many as you want. There may be four, there may be five, there may be six. So in between a supplier to ultimate recipient, all would be third party. So we have to follow the provision of 10.1b because they become the third person at whose direction transaction is being done. So there can be four, five, six, no problem per se. And but the treatment would be only A would be the supplier and ultimate recipient would be the customer C. In between parties are only third person. Right. Um, so uh, Bimalji, I have one person copy pasting the same question. So that is uh, Mr. Pawan Kumar. If you can see in the chat, he has actually posted a really big question on uh, uh, on uh, a case uh, that he has faced. So if you can see in the chat, you'll be able to find Pawan Kumar Gaur, right? Yes, yes. Sir, if we are registered in Haryana, importing goods, but received in Mumbai, kept in a bonded warehouse in Mumbai, so can the sale be made directly from bonded warehouse in Mumbai itself by bill two and SIP two? See, try to understand once you have received the goods and receiving the goods means the two way. If it is still in custom bonded warehouse, and you have only filed the inbound bill of entry, not the ex-bond bill of entry for home consumption. Till that time there is ex-bond for home consumption, it can be built to ship to model, no problem, because this is not received by you. It will consider in transit for you. And that's what, but uh, for a custom bonded sale with a recent uh, Finance Act 2023 changes, of course, this transaction is neither a supply of goods nor supply of services. But please bear in your mind, please bear, bear in your mind for reversal of common credit treated as exempt supplies. This transaction para 8A of Schedule 3 
is being included. So reversal is required from a date to be notified. So Pavan ji, very simple. Agar aapne custom bonded warehouse mein rakha hai maal, custom bonded warehouse mein, iska malab aapne goods clear nahi karaya hai. You have not cleared the goods as yet for the home consumption. So it will be considered it is still in transit and built to ship to model can be followed. But who would be filing that, you know, final bill of entry? The person to whom you're selling the goods. So for you, it will continue to be out of, uh, you know, Indian territory, neither a sell, uh, neither a supply of goods, nor supply of services. So for you, no taxability. It is final person who is filing bill of entry for home consumption. He will pay the custom duty, including IGST component. That is my answer, Pabanji. Hope I'm clear. Pabanji, say yes in a chat box because you were copy pasting. That was communicated to me. Say yes that you got it. Next. Pimalji, people want to know how they can pre-order your books. <laughs> that is going to be available through Amazon. And uh, quite obvious, Joho Books is a partner with Bimaljan. Bimaljan is a partner with Joho Books. So you may have a lot of announcement coming up in next webinar. So getting free book is another option which uh, you can always look at by joining the webinar of Joho Books. Stay tuned, but otherwise these books would be available on Amazon as well, and a uh, link could be provided accordingly to all of you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. We have actually, uh, Bimalji has stayed with us for uh, one hour and 15 minutes, close to two hours for the webinar. And uh, we have a lot of questions coming in, but um, due to time constraint, we'll not, be take, uh, we'll not be able to take all of it. So please feel free to post all your questions on Bimalji's uh, social media accounts. He is very active on social media. You will get responses and you can interact with him over there as well. And he conducts a lot of webinars apart from uh, collaborations with Soho from, on his own uh, channel as well. And he keeps posting videos. So please do stay updated on Bimalji's social platforms to... Uh, yeah, yeah, Bimalji. Uh, I do not know. Today we are using different platform. Am I right, Hasini? Yeah, yes, Vimalji, yes. A lot of emojis are there. So I do not <laughs> know. All the participants have in, uh, enjoyed uh, putting, you know, a lot of emojis here and there. Uh, so interesting, but <laughs> a lot of cycling going on, a lot, <laughs> lot of smiling going on, a lot of clapping going on. I liked it, but uh, we should have some option of chat also. Chat box I was not you. there. So that is the region uh, some of the participants was facing where the chat box, what we can do with the first part and second part to all the participants, you must have made note, right? Which I requested. You can always take those notes and put on social media. I can give you my mobile number also today, but put on social media, tag Joho Books, tag Demelgen. At least those who have not joined today, at least they will come to know that you are the learned participants today. You learn so much of new things uh, in the journey of GST. So you can take my mobile number, but Joho Books and uh, me, you can tag on any social media with your note, whatever you have prepared. That will give the mileage to you and to others to follow and join our next webinar as well. So my mobile number, you can take it down, 9810604. 563. So I've given my number to all of you. So please post your note. Let me see that uh, what kind of note you have prepared. I'm damn sure you must have prepared a good note, which I would be liking and always you can put on social media to take it forward. My compliment to each one of you, taking out your time from your BG schedule and try to learn GST. And I always say growing stronger together. And that is what the GST version all about. And we are taking this initiative uh, together. Jo, uh, now handing over to Harshini to sum up today. Bimalji, I have an interesting comment that is from Amit Kumar. He is saying, Bimal sir is Bhishma Pitama of GST for us. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm so much, you know, I really owe myself to them. They are so true lover of me. Their love and affection really helping me and motivating me. So I really give all credit back to my this audience. They are the backbone. They are the real backbone uh, that is helping me to grow and I'm trying my best. That is what my comment, but uh, I will request each one of you keep 
uh, best uh, giving your businesses blessings at all time and that's what we all are looking for and from my side i always pray to the god god bless all of us together thank you so much for wonderful webinar bimal ji and uh, you uh, all, all the 300 audience who ever participated with us today stay tuned for more such collaborations with bimal ji in the coming financial year as well we are so happy you joined us and you made uh, i think bimal ji's day and also my day for hosting the webinar so thank you so much everybody thank you for joining thank you bimal ji thank you thank you